Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I know that it's been a really long time and I'm so sorry about that. To be honest with you guys, I go through these ups and downs with my plants um, where I'll be on a really big high and I'm like buying up all the plants and I'm spending all this time on my plants and I'm like really nurturing them and they're doing amazing things. And then I either go into like a low period of time where my anxiety is really high. Because my anxiety is high, I get really like emotionally exhausted if that makes sense. So I'm just like sort of down and exhausted and finding the energy and the motivation to do things gets really tough sometimes. I don't know what you would call that, but I go through these ebbs and flows and every single time I go through like the low periods of time, my plants take a direct hit because I'm not watering them, I'm not caring for them, I'm not checking in on them. I really lose interest in them, sort of, as bad as that sounds. Like, I don't get as excited about them. Even when they're pushing new growth, I'm just kind of like, okay. Like, I, I just, I'm so, like, emotionally exhausted, I guess, that I just can't, I just can't be the best mama to them in those times because I have actual kids and dogs and a husband and we have bearded dragons and there's just other things that, you know, really require me to like scoop up whatever energy I have and pour it into them. So yeah, my plants always take a direct hit. I would love to say that that's not going to continue to happen, but um, it's been an on and off cycle for probably about three or so years now. So I'm not gonna lie to you, it's probably gonna happen again, but that's life y'all. And you know, we can't be ashamed of it. We're human and it happens to all of us. So if you're feeling guilty about neglecting your plants, y'all don't. Whether you're busy, whether you are fighting a little bit with yourself or whatever the case may be, like it happens you're fine there they'll be fine <laughs> everything is fine don't stress but i am in a period where i feel good and i feel excited i am stressed of course life is stressful there's a lot of stuff going on in my life right now but like my plants are almost like therapy and comfort to me instead of it feeling like a task or a chore so it's just you know you never know <laughs> i struggle with really bad anxiety and so um, I just wanted to explain that because I feel like there's going to be times where it seems like I'm not as into my plants or I'm not like posting as much or I seem like I'm okay with certain plants dying or whatever. And that's not the case. It's just that like I give myself grace, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, this is a hobby for me. This is not like make it or break it if they die. It's just enjoyment and of course I'm not ever trying to kill plants they are living things but I hope y'all get what I'm saying like I know how much I struggle with my anxiety and I'm not going to add to that struggle by putting pressure on myself to have like picture perfect plants at all times or beat myself up if they die like it is what it is a plant can be replaced <laughs> it's fine anyway that was a really weird rant I'm sorry I haven't had caffeine and <sighs> Sometimes I feel like my brain tries to make up for the lack of caffeine by like perking me up, but it ends up just me rambling like I'm doing right now. So anyway, we are here because I ordered a plant. I'm excited about it because it is a tissue culture plant. I'm actually low-key very scared about it too because I've never experienced tissue culture or anything. I've had my fair share of wet stick propagations and rooting cuttings and things like that. So I'm no noob at like the idea of nurturing and babying a plant, but I feel like tissue culture is, you know, it's like, yeah. Cause you have like your cuttings, then you have like your wet stick propagations, and then you got your like tissue culture, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> this is a plant I've been wanting for at least, it's probably been close to two years now, if not longer. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I don't see a lot of people talk about this plant though, which that's another thing is that sometimes I feel like my plants aren't like super exciting to y'all because I'm not buying plants that are like, 
super rare, super popular right now, super talked about right now. When I first got into plants, I was just buying whatever plants everybody else wanted because I felt like I should want them too. I was a part of a couple of Facebook groups that I felt like maybe weren't the healthiest um, environment or dynamic. And I was, I won't say I was like, ooh, so popular, but like, I was kind of well known in these groups because I was close to people who were very big into the group and very well known in the group. And so I think that that added pressure for me to like buy the plants people wanted in the purges, have these big impressive plants so that I felt like I was good enough or like I proved that I was a plant person. I removed myself from the plant groups just because I felt like, like I said, and this was years ago, so this isn't about any groups that are, you know, a thing now, at least I don't think so. Even if they are still existing, they probably are completely overhauled. So this is nothing about any Facebook groups. This isn't even about like Facebook groups being bad. I think it was just, um, we were all swept up in this mindset of like you need everything all the time you need the rarest most expensive plant you need the most variegated you need all of them you need them to be big you need them to be perfect and i think we were all just in this rat race to like prove ourselves instead of just enjoying the plants that we have and loving the plants that we had it was almost like a status thing i felt like i kind of got swept into it and ended up with a lot of plants that i just did not care about and I spent a lot of money on these plants that I just did not care about. And it really killed my love for plants. I got so over it that I just got rid of literally all of my plants, no matter how, many, how much money I spent on it, no matter how much time or energy, no matter how sought after it was, I was just so over it. And I got rid of everything. Um, and I went like a whole year without even a freaking fern, y'all. Like I was done. <laughs> when I moved into this house, I was like, okay, I'm kind of craving my plants again. But this time around, I don't really want to join any Facebook groups. I don't really want to have any sort of influence because I don't want to get swept up in that bye 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 mentality. You know what I mean? I'm in my local Facebook group, but I feel like the environment is very um healthy minded like there's no real like showing off or pressure to buy or, like status issues like there's there's none of that in my local facebook group everybody is so awesome um that i've come across so i feel like that's like an okay group to be in but yeah like bigger groups i try to stay out of i'm sure there are some really amazing facebook groups out there right now but I just, like I said, I just don't want to get swept into the hype of like buying a bunch of plants that really don't bring me joy. And also one thing that I kind of get like really addicted to are purges. Oh my gosh, y'all. Let me tell you, I got some fast ass thumbs. And so when I'm in those purges, I could literally like sold, 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 sold. And I'm getting it before everybody else. It was kind of something I became known for because like, I don't know how I do it, but somehow like nine times out of ten if I type sold I'm the first one and so when you're in that fast pace mindset where you're like okay here's the next plant you got to hit sold before anybody else gets it but you're really not even looking at the plant you're just typing sold and you're not even really like absorbing what you're buying but then you don't want to not buy it because you just claimed it and then like you know what I mean so <laughs> I try to stay away from like group purges or high pressure things like that because I can get very, especially when I'm like having a low moment, sometimes like spending, it feels good in the moment, you know? But then I, I almost always have buyer's remorse because I know that's not something that I've been really wanting, really seeking. And then if I am seeking a plant, like I want to be able to see what plant I'm getting, really think about it. Is this like the, the, the plant for me? Not just like, I got to get this cutting because somebody else is going to type sold. I don't know where all these rants are coming from. I felt like it's been such a long time since we sat down and chatted. So anyways, that's why I'm really not in Facebook groups. I'm not on like plant Instagram um, because I just want to buy plants that bring me joy and want to buy plants that I really love and are intriguing to me 
but because of that sometimes I feel like nobody else really cares about my collection or wants to see me take care of my plants or see what my collection is about or how it's growing because it's you're not gonna find like oh plants you know what I mean <laughs> I think that because I only get things that are lovely to me or interesting to me I feel like I do a really good job taking care of them <laughs> as you can tell because there's a benefit to it I, there's no resentment in taking care of it I'm not taking care of it because I feel like I should want to so I truly enjoy watching them grow I truly enjoy um watching them progress and I think it just you could tell in the way that they grow but anyway oh my god I'm so sorry all of that to say that like if you feel like you've kind of been getting swept up in like bye 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 just slow it down a little bit and remember that this is a hobby that's supposed to bring you joy if you don't like a plant no matter how hyped it is no matter how rare it is no matter how expensive it is if you don't like it don't buy it it's it's okay it doesn't make you less of a plant enthusiast it doesn't make you less of a plant mom or dad it just it's not your thing and that's okay I think I kind of just wanted to get that off my chest because I feel like the plant community has changed so much in the last four years since I was kind of involved in it and it's kind of sad to watch it progress the way that it was going. I don't really know how the plant community is now because like I said I've been like literally out completely of the plant community for probably three years now two or three years now maybe this is all old news maybe this isn't how it is anymore but just in case it is like plants are not meant to be status symbols they're not meant to make you a better or worse person or make you feel better or worse about yourself they're supposed to be enjoyed they are gifts from god or mother earth whatever you believe in and i think that if it's not bringing you joy then it's not serving its purpose so move on from it you know I'm also so excited to see the prices of plants are getting so much cheaper. I am coming back at the perfect time because, oh my gosh, that was another reason I wasn't buying a lot of plants because the prices on some of these plants, baby. There were some plants that I literally bought four years ago for like $50 that would go for like $600 like last year or the year before. And I was like, I can, no, <laughs> I cannot. Mm -mm. So I'm glad all of that is settling down too. I do think tissue culture has a lot to do with that. And I know that that's a very like touchy subject, the whole tissue culture thing. I can see where some people come from because especially people who have like grown out their plant um, or who are in business selling plants and they painstakingly like propagate their plants and make sure that they're healthy and to have somebody kind of just come in with tissue culture and mass produce these plants it seems kind of like a slap in the face but also it's almost one of those like work smarter not harder situations where back in the day we didn't have internet so we did our research papers with books at the library like me as a parent now seeing my kids be able to just google their research topics and find things for their research papers where I remember going to the library to do research um, when I was in elementary and middle school. Me watching them do that, like should I be mad at them for that? No. It wasn't a thing until I was a little bit older and in like middle school, high school. So like, yeah, I might be a little salty about the extra work I had to do, but that's kind of the way life goes. We progress and we're supposed to evolve and progress so that's kind of how I see tissue culture then again I'm not a business I'm not selling so I don't know maybe I'm just detached from it but I think tissue culture is an amazing thing I think it's a development that is going to not only help plants be accessible but I think it'll also help prevent like endangerment of a lot of these plants it prevents poachers because nobody's going to pay these high prices for a poached ass plant anymore. And then if something goes extinct in the wild, we can literally tissue culture it and replant it. Like I see it that way. I think it's a beautiful thing. So that's my stance on it. I totally understand the people who are like, no, not for it, but this is a place of acceptance regardless. We can love each other no matter how we feel. Um, so that's what we're gonna do, okay? Okay, cool. It has been 20 minutes and I still haven't showed you guys this plant. So while we're talking tissue culture, plant that's been on my wish list for a couple of years now. It's a philodendron variegated blizzard 
Gigantium. I'll pop a little picture up of a specimen that's just like mm, beautiful. Not my picture, but hopefully I'll have whoever's picture it is here. But I've been wanting one for so long and I feel like they're actually not that easy to find. But I have been seeing quite a few tissue culture options on Etsy. Ignore my hideous nails. Things are busy at work and I type a lot, so I didn't even bother getting my nails done, but look. Oh my gosh. It's like highly variegated, which I enjoy in the Gigantium Blizzards. I have seen some that are predominantly green, and though they're pretty, they're not quite the vibe that I want from my Gigantium. It's perfection, oh my gosh. I want to kill it I'm so scared okay so I've been watching a lot of videos about tissue culture and how to like acclimate tissue culture plants I have confidence that it will be fine and to be honest this one looks pretty big this isn't like I mean it's small but it's not like it doesn't look like those ones that are super super teeny tiny and like you're gonna kill it by looking at it wrong. This one looks like it's been grown for a hot little minute. It's gonna be all right. It could take a little bit of some sideways glances, you know? I think it's gonna be okay. Do y'all wanna pot this up together? I'm gonna leave it there for now. I have to jump on a work call. My like lunch break is almost over. So once I'm done with that, we'll come back. We'll take that out, we'll pot it up. I'm gonna watch a few videos and stuff just to reinforce my confidence here and then we will do this. Okay, so <laughs> done with work. And now we're gonna get this little bad boy potted up. I've watched a couple of videos, so I'm thinking we should be good. I should know roughly what I'm doing here. <laughs> We've got two bowls of distilled water. My hands are freshly washed. And part of me was thinking about cleaning this glass container out and just sticking it back in here, but like obviously filled with the stratum because it kind of looks like there's other plants kind of growing off of it. So I feel like I might need a wider neck just in case there's more than one plant that grows. So that's why I'm gonna use this because it's like much wider, see? So I think I'm just gonna use this old yogurt container, which by the way, this is like the best. The one with the little like chocolate chunks in it. Oh my gosh. So I disinfected this with some alcohol. And it's go time now. I am so scared y'all. But we're just going to gently take this plant out. And I'm going to stick it in water for now. And then I'm definitely going to like clean this out and reuse this for other things. Just not for this. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna try to get off some of these like casings. It's already got some really nice fuzzy roots on it, which is kind of insane. Can you guys see that? I mean, honestly, it looks really good. From what I've read, the plant like keeps dividing itself. So it just keeps creating more and more plants, which I'm not mad at. I would be totally fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to give it the space to do that if it wants to, but I want to take all of these kind of like dead looking leaves off first so they don't just like rot all over the place. This looks so good. Oh my gosh. Please thrive. I will cry. Now I won't, but it would be devastating. <laughs> I'm going to put it in some clean water just to do like a second rinse. And I'm gonna let it like hang out in here for a quick second while we prep our container. So this is the fluval stratum. And it says that it stimulates strong plant growth, promotes neutral to mildly acidic pH, and it's for plants and shrimp. I don't know how popular this is in the plant community just yet, but I had heard one person mention it when I was watching a video on tissue culture specifically. So then I looked it up and there was a couple of people on YouTube who um, like rave about this. So I'm actually really excited. This works the way everybody is saying that it works. I am really excited to kind of dabble with this a little bit, especially for like seedlings and things. 
so oh my gosh I just got that all over the floor what an idiot okay, I'm gonna pour a little slower <laughs> oh my gosh okay maybe next time I'll get myself like a cute little scoop or something because that's crazy <laughs> Directions, gently rinse fluval stratum in a large colander or similar device without agitating the substrate to remove fine dust particles. Okay, so I'm supposed to rinse this. <laughs> Should have read that first, but that's okay. At least now I know how much to rinse. So I'm gonna go rinse this really quickly and I'll be right back. Went ahead and rinsed the stratum and I cleaned up all the crap off the floor. <laughs> so now we're gonna stick this bad boy in here. I'm not quite sure how yet. Um, so I'm going to try to move all the leaves, hopefully without breaking any, but I'm just going to try to gather up all the leaves in my hand. Now, I guess I'm just going to try to like dig a hole in this as wide as I can with my finger. And again, I am not a professional, so this is just for entertainment purposes. Don't copy what I'm doing. Huh. But I'm gonna stick the roots down in that hole and then I'm gonna backfill it. Everything is covered. So that is what it's looking like. It's a little bit lopsided, but that's okay. But that's what it's looking like. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of um, some root juice and mycorrhizae in some distilled water and I'm gonna just fill probably down to like right here because I think there's like capillary action I think it can wick the water up and since this is already wet I think it'll stay wet for a little while and I might I might find some kind of dome to cover this with as well so that it just stays super humid just while it's kind of acclimating. We'll see, but here we go. I'll check in in a few weeks and we'll see how things are going. So say a little prayer for the Gigantium. I'm so excited. But yeah, thanks for going through this experience with me. We'll check in in a little while, see how it's doing, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.